Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum, the refreshing, delicious treat that gives you chewing enjoyment, presents for your listening enjoyment, John Lund as... Johnny Dollar. Ed Quigley, Johnny. Are you free? If you mean am I available, yeah. What's up, Ed? Uh, remember Mark San Antonio? The bootlegger? Yeah, sure. What about him? Well, somebody shot him this morning. Shot him to death in St. Petersburg, Florida. Oh, yeah? Great Eastern Fidelity set up a trust two years ago for San Antonio's daughter. They want a full report before they come across. I see. They know who killed him yet or why? No, not a thing, Johnny. Just that he's dead. When can you leave? As soon as I can get a plane. Good. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum bring you John Lund in the transcribed adventure of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum refreshes you. Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum gives you real chewing enjoyment. Yes, for chewing enjoyment plus refreshment, it's Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. The lively, delicious flavor of Wrigley's Spearmint cools your mouth helps keep your throat moist, and gives you a nice little lift. The good, smooth chewing of Wrigley's Spearmint helps keep you feeling fresh and alert, adds enjoyment to whatever you're doing. So for chewing enjoyment plus refreshment, treat yourself often to Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Home Office, Great Eastern Fidelity and Life Insurance Corporation, 6th and Jordan Avenue, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the San Antonio matter. Expense account item one, $162.03. Transportation and incidentals, Hartford to St. Petersburg, Florida. I arrived exactly 10 hours after I received the call from Ed Quigley. The rainy weather there was as bad, if not worse, than the weather I just left. I checked in at the St. Petersburg Hotel, shaved, showered, had a meal, and started in. My first contact was a police officer, Lieutenant Benjamin by name. A big, swarthy man who seemed to know what he was about. I, uh, I don't quite get this, Dollar. What's your part? Just that my insurance company would like a full report on everything that's happened. Oh, you mean a report separate from what we have? Yeah, that's about it, Lieutenant. Well, it's their dough. They can spend it any way they want to. What can I do for you? Well, maybe we can help each other, Lieutenant. If you'll sort of let me tag along and see what's what on the case. (laughs) We'll see. Well, San Antonio bought a big place over on the south end of town 11 years ago, just after he was released from Alcatraz. He's lived there ever since. Quiet, minding his own business, keeping his nose out of trouble. Yeah, so I understand. As long as a man does that, even a man with a background like San Antonio, as long as a man does that, we don't bother him, he doesn't bother us. Well, today was the first peep we ever got out of him. What happened? Seems at 6 o'clock this morning, he phoned into the station and said that somebody was watching his house. Prowl car went out to have a look around. He told the officers that two men had been hanging around the front of his house, but... They got away just before the car showed up. Uh Uh-huh. Can you give a description? Yeah, yeah, both about six feet, dark, wore dark overcoats and hats. San Antonio didn't recognize either of them. The officers put the description on the air and tried to find them, but they didn't have any luck. Now, San Antonio wasn't the kind of a bird to get excited about a couple of guys staking out his place. He pretty well knew how to take care of himself and handle trouble. Yeah, but you say that uh, he hadn't been in trouble or asked for any around here. That's right, too. And I'm sure he didn't want any either. So his call was treated like any other prowler call. We investigated, didn't find anything, and promised to keep our eyes open. Mm -hmm. The uh, cook came on duty about 8.30. She went in the kitchen, made him some breakfast, took it up to his room, and she found him dead. He'd been shot twice with a Luger. Lab has the slugs now. It was a close-range job. Well, then the surest bet is the two men that San Antonio reported watching his house. Well, that's about it. Wish we could find him somewhere. What about the cook? Uh, She just worked their days fixing his meals and taking care of him. San Antonio must have been past 60. He was 67. (laughs) I guess he was beginning to show a little tread. 
A man who's lived the kind of life he has and done the things he's done is bound to show some wear and want some rest sometime in his life. According to her, he spent his days painting. Painting? Yeah. Mark San Antonio? Every room in the house covered with pictures he's done these last few years. Oil's pretty good, too. And when he wasn't painting, he was listening to records. All kinds of heavy stuff in the way of music around the place. Now, you hardly figure a bootlegger like San Antonio thinking of anything like music and art. Hardly ever. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and all the time he was in action running booze up in New York and getting himself in trouble with the tax people, he was bound to step on a lot of toes and get himself a lot of enemies. The kind of people who wouldn't forget. You, uh, you talk to him much? Oh, yes. Now and then I'd meet him on the street or in a store. He seemed pretty gentled up. Hmm. How'd he live? Apparently he saved something from the old days. A house he paid for in cash. Bank of New York used to send him a statement every month. I suppose he had some arrangement with them. Well, that's about it so far. I see. Well, I sure appreciate the information. It's okay. When I get any more, I'll let you know. Crime Lab's still working on some of the stuff in his room. Maybe we'll get something there. Mm-hmm. Say, uh, do you mind if I talk to that cook? Oh, that's your privilege, Dollar. Her name's Olson. She's staying at the San Antonio house during all this... Okay. Uh, San Antonio's daughter blew into town this afternoon. She's at the house, too. What did she have to say? Oh, nothing. She she didn't even know Mark San Antonio was her father until your insurance company told her. Didn't know? No, no. She's been living in Philadelphia all these years with an aunt. All very legitimate. The girl's been using the name Randall. Edith Randall. Yes, sir. How do you do? Uh, you Mrs. Olson? Yes, sir. My name is Dollar, Mrs. Olson. I'm from the Great Eastern Fidelity people. You suppose I could speak with Miss Randall? Oh, I don't think so, sir. She's not feeling well. All of this has been quite a shock to her. I see. Well, then I guess my trip out here tonight was for nothing. Well, you come tomorrow, Mr. Dollar. Please. Mrs. Olson? Mrs. Olson? Yes, Miss Randall. Who is it? It's uh, Mr. Dollar. He's from the insurance company. I... Insurance company? Yes. I'd like to talk to him, Mrs. Olson. The woman who stood at the base of the iron grill stairway was tall and dark-eyed. She came toward me smiling, showing a frank, wide, happy mouth. Young kind of face that could have been 20 or maybe 30. Mrs. Olson excused herself and we were alone. I wanted to talk to someone who might be able to give me a little more information about all this. It's all quite new to me. Well, I'll tell you what I can, Miss Randall. Yes, I'm sure you will. From what a Mr. Hearth and the insurance offices told me on the phone, I'm to be quite well off because this man was murdered here today. You mean Mr. San Antonio? Yes, Mr. San Antonio. They tell me he was my father. To awaken one morning and discover you're not one person, but an entirely different person. I mean... I'm the daughter of a famous racketeer who's been murdered. You seem to me like a very nice person. And so do you, Mr. Dollar. Will you tell me all about this, please? Well, just our part of it, Miss Randall. Let's see, uh, you're 26 now, is that right? That is. Well, 26 years ago, your father was on trial for income tax evasion. Just before he was convicted, he set up a trust fund with my insurance company... To provide for you. It's been paying money for your support and education all these years. According to the condition of the trust, the rest of the money reverts to you now. It comes to well over $50,000. And that's all there is to it? Yeah, except for this. You mean my father... It's so strange to say that. My father's murder? Mm-hmm. I suppose I'm grateful to my father... I suppose I should be grateful. I can't say that I'm particularly sorry about his death any more than I would be if any human being died violently somewhere. How strangely life treats us sometimes. How oh, very strangely. You know, you've somehow made me feel comfortable in this house. May I offer you a drink? 
It was strange for me, too, because I felt comfortable in the house. Over the drinks, we talked of Mark San Antonio. I told her what I knew of his life, of his activities up until the time he'd been sent to Alcatraz. She told me how she'd been reared, far removed from anything that might have connected her in any way with the San Antonio name. Altogether, it was a revealing conversation for both of us. She'd never imagined any part of the kind of life her father had lived. And I never imagined that it was possible for anyone to get away from a man like San Antonio. For the road, Johnny? All right. How long will you be in St. Petersburg? Till all this is straightened out. You mean you'll be here until they find out who killed him? Mm Mm-hmm. How about you? I really don't know. I really don't even know why I came here exactly. Yes, I do. I wanted to see him, see what he looked like, what kind of a life he led here. Did you see him? No. I suppose I can if I want to. But I have seen what kind of a life he had. He was just an ordinary man, wasn't he? Have you noticed the pictures he's painted? Mm Mm-hmm. May I ask you something? Well, yes. How do you feel about him now? Is this for your report? Mm, For myself. Since you've been here in these last two hours, I've begun to think of him for what he was. My father, I mean. I'd like to know why he was killed and who did it. Will I see you again? I hope so. Edith. Yes? I hope so very much. So do I, Johnny. I left her at the door that night with a warm sensation inside of me. Something I certainly hadn't expected in the routine business of investigating a murder case. The next morning, I was back at the house talking to Mrs. Olson. She gave me all the information she could remember about San Antonio's activities up until the time of his death. Same information she'd given the police. All of it accurate, but lacking in any possible clue as to the identity of his slayer or slayers. I had breakfast with Edith there and then went back downtown to spend a solid 12 hours in the company of Lieutenant Benjamin, who had still not located or identified the two mysterious men. However, there were other developments... Say, this may be something. Oh? San Antonio's partner in the old days, Palalici, was murdered in Newark last night. Timmy Palalici? That's the one. Any details? No, just that he was shot to death with a Luger. When the slugs taken from San Antonio's body were compared with those that killed Palalici and were proved to have been fired from the same gun, the case took on new proportions. Every available bit of information regarding the two ex-big shots of the 20s was located, read, and re-read. It meant activity in such cities as St. Louis, Chicago, New Orleans, and Buffalo. But no new information as to the identity of the killer. Johnny. Hey, what is it? You're, you're shaking. Hold me. Hold me, please. I suppose I'm being a terrible fool about it all, Johnny. But they've been after me all day. A cheap little thing. A newspaper syndicate wants me to write my exclusive story as the daughter of Mark St. Antonio. Fairy princess daughter of racketeer. Hey, hey, now take it easy, honey. Even Hollywood called. Some producer saw my picture in the paper and offered me a contract. He says he has a script all ready. Come on, come on now, come on. I'll try. Women are fools, aren't they? I shouldn't have come here. I shouldn't have shown up at all. Then what would I have done, Edith? Then what would I have done? Mix yourself a drink, Johnny, and I'll put on a new face. It had become apparent to me in the five days I had known her and the five days that she'd known of her father that she'd grown to love him, or the memory of him. She stated it very simply. Everyone needs a father. If you find out you have one, or had one, really, well, you love him. 
We were walking up the gravel path of the house when she said that. I suppose I was thinking of how nice it would be to kiss her at the door when I heard someone behind me. I twisted, trying for the gun in my inside pocket, but there was nobody to shoot at. At least nobody I could see. Why me? Why me, Johnny? Why? Edith died right there, and I lowered her to the ground. Friends, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you'll enjoy chewing Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. Chew Wrigley's Spearmint while you're working. The lively, full-bodied flavor of Wrigley's Spearmint gives you a refreshing little lift. The smooth, pleasant chewing of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum helps keep you feeling relaxed and satisfied, makes your job seem easier. Chew Wrigley's Spearmint Gum in your home, when you're out walking or driving, when you're enjoying sports and other activities. Wrigley's Spearmint Gum tastes good anytime, and the natural chewing aids digestion and helps keep your teeth bright and attractive. Yes, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you'll enjoy chewing Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. <laughs> star, John Lund, we bring you the second act of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Ten seconds after Edith Randall died in my arms, I was stumbling down the gravel path that led from the house to the road. It all happened so suddenly and violently that I can't say that what I did from there on or what I felt was entirely rational. All I know is that a car was parked at the deep end of the gateway and two men were just climbing into it. Hey, hey, you two, stop! 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 Get out of there. Both of you. Get out with your hands up. I'm hit. I'm afraid to move. Get out! Come on. I'm coming. I come. All right, you two. Come on, come on. Uh, no use on him, mister. He's used up. You got him real good. You... I, I need the knock. Stay where you are. Mr. Dollar! Mr. Dollar! What is it? What's happened? Don't phone the police, Mrs. Olson. Oh, Only get over here right away. Who are they? What is all Go this? on, do what I tell you. Hurry. All right, Mr. Dollar. All right. You... You pretty tough fella. What's your name? Giuseppe Rico. Who's he? He was my brother. Giovanni. I need the doctor. Listen. Tell it to me. Tell it to me right now. There's no policeman around to cover you. Nobody but you and me. If you don't tell it to me now, you'll never tell it to anybody. Now tell it. Tell it. Never, never. I die first. I had one bullet left in my gun. I set the barrel back against his temple and pulled back the hammer. I think I really meant to go through with it. And for the first time, I noticed that my shoulder was covered with blood. My head began to ring, and I had to let go and straighten up. That was not the thing to do. Oh. Hello there, Dollar. Huh? Oh, Lieutenant. Quite a night, this one, huh? Yeah, but... Oh, you stopped one, boy. You were sure curled up when we got there. Edith? I'm sorry, Dollar. I thought I might have been wrong. No, you weren't. How long am I slated for this place? Well, the doctor says you can get out when you want to. Feel like talking? 
They were just there, and they shot her. That's it. Which one? I don't know. They were together. That's enough, isn't it? Sure, sure. Same Luger that killed San Antonio and Palalici. Just trying to pin it down a little more. We can't get much out of the one that's left. Let me ask him some questions, oh, easy, Lieutenant. Easy, easy. I know how you feel about her. Just lie back there now. <sighs> Did he say anything at all? No, nothing more than his name and his brother's name. Found papers on him that say they're from New York. Police in New York are looking him up right now. So far, they haven't been able to find any connection with San Antonio. Hmm. People like San Antonio and Palalici make enemies, but, but that girl, it doesn't figure... And those two flew here from New York just to get her. Yeah, yeah. Dollar, you talked to her a lot in these last few days. What'd she say? Nothing that has anything to do with this. You know yourself, she didn't even know who her father was till he got killed. Well, that could have been an act. No, it wasn't. I knew her well enough to mm. tell you that. Yeah, well, why would they gun her down? Why the trip? That Rico boy you're holding in the jail hospital has the answer. Get it from him. Yeah. We will, Dollar. We will. Oh, there's someone here. Just a minute. Sure. Oh, Dollar. Huh? Maybe I spoke too soon. Rico died five minutes ago. As far as my investigation of the San Antonio case went... Could have ended right there. The Luger found in the dead Rico brother was the same gun that had fired fatal bullets into all three victims. I got my release from the hospital and late that afternoon walked into Lieutenant Benjamin's office. Dollar, I don't get it. Don't get what? Here. This just came from New York on the Rico boys. Oh? Came to this country when they were 18 and 21. Both of them were naturalized citizens. Records? Not a thing. No trouble ever. Oh, that's funny. What else? Well, that's about it. Police there can't seem to locate their old man. He disappeared a week ago. Lived on the east side somewhere. He a naturalized citizen, too? Oh, that's another funny thing. He's taken out his papers and was due for examination with the immigration people this week. They're looking for him, too. Um, when are you leaving? Tomorrow afternoon on the 1 o'clock plane. Well, come on, I'll buy you some dinner. We had dinner together and talked about the case. It had been a strange one. The deaths were useless, the motives unknown. The killers weren't even associated with their victims. I parted company with Lieutenant Benjamin and went back to my hotel to trouble it out with sleep. About 11 o'clock, I had a phone call. Johnny Dollar. Hi, Dollar, this is Ben. Oh, what's up? Old man Rico just walked into the city morgue. He wants to take his two sons back to New York for burial. Twenty minutes later, I was standing in the coroner's office when Lieutenant Benjamin led a small, wizened old man into the room and sat him down in one of the chairs. Gave him a glass of water, offered him a cigarette. Old man refused. No, 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 senora, no. Oh. Thank you. Mr. Rico, this is Mr. Dollar. Hello, Mr. Dollar. Mr. Rico? I read of you. You killing my boys. You saw? Yes. They tried to kill me. Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, it's a bad. Why, Mr. Rico? It, it, it is simple. You was in the way. I don't mean about me. I mean about Edith Randall and Palalici and Mark San Antonio. Why? I take the water now, please. Why? Do you know why? See. Si. And tell me. They're all dead now. I'm still alive. Pietro Rico was held in custody for the immigration officials. He refused to talk about his sons or any of their activities. He just stayed in his jail cell. Silent, non-committal to all visitors, including the chaplain. I don't suppose we'd ever have gotten the story of it, except that the will of Mark San Antonio disclosed that before her marriage to him, his wife's name had been Maria Rico. Yeah. 
More questions, Mr. Dollar? No, I've got some answers. Mark San Antonio's wife was your daughter, wasn't she? Uh, wasn't she? See. Si. Well, is that all you have to say? I don't talk. Well, and I do, Mr. Rico. Because your daughter had a daughter. A lovely, wonderful daughter that your two sons killed. I happen to know that girl. She had to die, too. Why? Paralici, San Antonio, and her. They had to die. All are bad. All of us are bad at one time or another. Who made them die? You? See. Si. Who gave you the right? I'm the father. When a daughter marries a bad man, only bad can come of it. He came to our village many years ago and he took her away. He and the men of Palalici helped him. It live with me all this time. I live only to destroy him for that. I destroy him and the other man and the girl through my sons. Why the girl? She could not have been good from a bad man. A vendetta. Was that it? If you like, vendetta. He was a bad man who did bad things. Bad man. I smoke now. You got a cigar? The disposition of old Pietro Rico is up to the immigration authorities. I didn't stay around St. Petersburg for all the complex examinations that would have to be made to test his sanity. I had enough of St. Petersburg. <laughs> Expense account, item three, hotel and board, $79.30. Item four, hospital, $168.13. Item five, same as item one, transportation back to Hartford. Expense account total, $573.49. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Remember, friends, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum refreshes you. Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum gives you real chewing enjoyment. The lively, full-bodied flavor of Wrigley Spearmint cools your mouth, freshens your taste, sweetens your breath. The smooth, pleasant chewing of Wrigley Spearmint helps keep you feeling relaxed and satisfied, makes whatever you're doing more enjoyable. Yes, for refreshment plus chewing enjoyment, treat yourself often to Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum. Millions enjoy it daily. Get a few packages and always keep some handy. That's Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, brought to you by Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum, stars John Lund in the title role and was written by E. Jack Newman with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Featured in tonight's cast were John McIntyre, Joe Kearns, Jeanette Nolan, Virginia Gregg, and Jay Novello. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, is transcribed in Hollywood by Jaime Del Valle. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you enjoyed tonight's story of Johnny Dollar and that you're enjoying delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Gum every day. This is Charles Lyon inviting you to join us again next week at this same time when, from Hollywood, John Lund returns as... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is the CBS Radio Network. Floor wet.